Russell Gagan coming back at you from Russell's Fishing Tech. Got another video today, another 101 video. This is just a basic conversation about uh, something that we use out on the Great Lakes every day pretty much when we go fishing for trout and salmon. And a lot of guys even use them for walleyes, which is called a diver, a trolling diver. Um, so today our, our video is going to be on trolling divers 101. I'm just basically going to go over the different uh, popular types of divers that I use or we sell here and talk a lot about um, for Lake Michigan salmon and trout fishing. Um, and there's basically three brands slash types that we use, um, all of which are, are fairly similar, um, each of which, you know, sort of uh, separate themselves a little bit by design and quality and things like that. Um, we'll start with the tried and true, the uh, one that's been around the longest, the original, I guess, so to say, trolling diver, um, or the most popular one, which is the Dipsy Diver. Uh, that's made by Lure Jensen. Uh, there's multiple sizes available. The most popular size for out on, on Lake Michigan here, the most popular two sizes are the number one, which would be considered the standard size. That's a number one, kind of a cool green UV color. Um, and then the ever so popular today size, the Magnum, which is also the number three um, here in a chrome uh, diver. Uh, that's very popular on uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, that's what I talk a lot about, like uh, running on wire divers and sometimes even on the braid, we're running a Magnum diver. That is a uh, Magnum Dipsy diver, okay? Uh, that's from that brand. There's also smaller models available, like this size zero, that's the one size smaller than the one. And, um, you know, there's times in shallow water and when you want to not gain depth so much, but you want to be able to put a little more line out for stealth away from the boat, that maybe you'd go down to a smaller size diver. Um, and we'll talk more about that in, in future videos, why and when you would use those. Uh, the concept with the diver is, is as such. We'll open up this Magnum one right here. So the concept with a trolling diver is that this is the end here that hooks to your line, okay, like this. This is the uh, line to your rod, excuse me. This is the end that goes to your bait. On a dipsy diver style, you can hook uh, a snap swivel to the top of this, or you can tie this end, uh, this barrel swivel here, directly to your line. And then um, all you do when you're ready to fish is just clip that over, okay? Now on the back of the divers, you can see there's a dial there with some numbers and it's set on zero right now. And depending on if this is an inside diver or an outside diver and what side of the boat it's on, you're gonna adjust this diver accordingly. I mentioned in my rod spread videos and my wire diver videos, I prefer my outside diver at a four and my inside diver at a one and a half. So if I was gonna run this as an outside diver, I would slide this all the way to what I call the edge of the weight which is right there. You can see the mark is right here and it's on the edge of the weight there at a four. Um, or if I wanted this to be an inside wire diver, I would put it in between the one and the two, like it is right there, in between the one and the two, so it's on a one and a half. Now, one of your questions may be, well, what side of the boat does this go on? The easiest way that I use to tell is if you're looking out the back of the boat you can very easily see, and I'm going to have to do this backwards, so st stick with me. Uh, you can very easily see um, by the weight all being on this side of the diver, when that tips down, it's going to push this way, okay? So you can very easily see if you just kind of, you know, hold the diver in front of you and look at it like I am right now. Based on the way I'm hold looking at it right now, the weight is on this side of the diver, which is going to tip the diver like this right? So it's going to go this way away from the boat. So if I'm looking at the back of the boat, this will be on my right side here. Um, and that's so that diver is going to go on a one and a half setting. It's going to be my inside wire diver on the right side of my boat as I'm looking out the back of my boat. That's the easiest way for me to tell because it can be very confusing because on the back of divers, it's sort of the opposite. Um, this actually says you've spun it, you've spun the dial to the left at a one and a half, which you have done. Um, so it's going to be on the right side of your boat or vice versa. If you spin the dial to the right, it's going to be on the left side of your boat, looking out the back of the boat, which is where you should be looking 
when you're setting your rods. So that gives you kind of a quick explanation of the back of the diver. I'm going to go ahead and set this one back to zero where it was. Now the only other adjustment that needs to be made on these is right here. So I mentioned that you're going to close that arm when you go to set it in the water. That's the tension arm. That's what engages and releases the diver from pulling to the side and down. When you release that arm, it, it won't pull to the side and down anymore. It makes it much easier for you to reel in. So you would trip that arm if you're just reeling it in to check, or you're hopefully when a fish strikes it, it will trip that arm. There's a screw on the side here that is the adjustment for how tight that jaw is and how much pressure it takes to open this arm. So depending on what you're pulling behind it, if it's a wire diver, if you got a flasher behind it, um, you know, if it's just a mono line, you know, depending on all the variables involved, you'll adjust that screw and that slot here for that arm to go in, that jaw as I call it, um, to the point where it will pull to the side and not trip in the waves, but yet the minute you get a strike, it pops open. That's the ideal setting for it. So. Um, that's sort of the only two things you need to do out of the package to a dipsy diver to make it work for you um, is adjust that jaw tension and then uh, change the back to the setting that you want it at. The other thing about a dipsy diver is all of them come with a detachable ring. Um, the Magnum diver, the number one, the number zero, all the divers come with a detachable ring that you can take on and off. The downside to it is those rings do fall off and they can be kind of a hassle to uh, you know, keep track of and not lose or they fall off in the water and then, they're, you know, then you've lost them, now you gotta replace them. Um, the benefit is you can fish that diver then with and without the ring, so it kind of makes it almost two sizes for you, but uh, it also can make it hard when you really need one with a ring, sometimes you can't find one because they fell off or you took them off or whatever the case may be. So that's the Dipsy Diver. Um, that's the explanation of how that one works and the different sizes available. Now we'll move on to what is our number one seller here and probably the most popular diver on Lake Michigan at least, which is the Deeper Diver by Dreamweaver. I check out one right here. This is the 107 size, also known as the standard. As you can see, it's basically the same size as the Dipsy Diver with a ring. Um, so they're identical. Uh, basically size wise so it's kind of the same as a standard diver standard dipsy diver size wise and then the 124 um, which is also very popular um, sometimes a year more popular that is the same as a magnum dipsy diver so same size profile as the magnum dipsy diver with the ring couple adjustments were made when the development of the deeper diver, which goes way back to a company called Walker, uh, Walker Downriggers was who came out with the dip, deeper diver originally and designed it. A couple of the adjustments that were made on the deeper diver that sort of were improvements, I guess you can say, to the dipsy diver uh, were the ring is molded in, so there's no uh, a detachable ring. The diver size incorporates the ring in it. Uh, so that's what you have all the time. I prefer that because then there's no lost rings, no rings that fell off. You're not digging for rings, etc., etc. If I want to go with the smaller size, I'll just use the smaller size. If I want the bigger one, I want the ring on it all the time because I'm trying to get maximum depth with that Magnum diver. Another thing is the back on the deeper diver has a ratcheting setting for every half adjustment where the dipsy diver does not. It's free sliding. Um, that's a big improvement on the, on the deeper diver because it makes it easier to get that half a click, that in between that one and a half and two and know that's where you are because each time you turn it, you do hear click, click, click and you get that adjustment. I do like that a lot. Um, and then the, uh, I feel like the jaw adjustment on the deeper diver is a little easier to work with um, than the dipsy diver. It, it just seems like it's, um, got more variation there. You can make small adjustments that'll work instead of kind of, uh, in the dipsy for me, it's like all or nothing. Either it's real tight or it's real loose. It's hard to get small, minute adjustments. I get real small adjustments out of the deeper diver. Um, I personally use the deeper divers most of the time, and uh, I really, really like those. Last but not least is a product that actually was invented here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, where my store is and where I'm from. I know the gentleman who invented this product, uh, himself. <coughs> um, Randy Evans was his name. He's no longer with us, unfortunately, but a great fisherman and was a friend of mine for many years. 
um, and that's a product called the Slide Diver. And the Slide Diver is exactly what the name is, um, explains to the explains the bulk of what it what its differences is from the dipsy diver and the deeper diver to the slide diver the slide diver has a concept that allows it to slide up and down the line you don't tie the line to each end of the diver like you do the dipsy diver or the deeper diver um, there's a hole on one end here on the arm that the line goes through then it goes through another gap here uh, in the middle underneath the jaw of the diver and then out this hole in the end here, this little tube section in the end, and out the diver. And what that allows you to do is you then tie a barrel swivel and a small leader to your lure, um, and that allows you to set basically any length of lead you want behind your diver, uh, five feet, 10 feet, 25 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, and when you get a strike and the jaw opens, just like the dipsy diver and the deeper diver, it slides all the way down to that uh, barrel swivel and stops. What's that do? What is the advantage there? Well, as I mentioned before, we tie a leader line to the back of each of these two divers, the dipsy diver and the deeper diver. And if you've watched my videos when we're using the deeper diver, you can see that if you use a leader that's longer, like I like to, um, I prefer kind of a 15 to 18 inch leader with these, you have to hand over hand the line in um, before you net the fish. So that's fine for me uh, because most of the time I'm fishing with individuals who know what they're doing. can be difficult for people if they take kids, their wives, um, friends that just don't fish regularly. Uh, that can be very difficult. If you're the only person on the boat or one of the only people on the boat that can help um, when you're trying to land a fish, trying to have a 15 to 18 foot leader can be almost impossible and make things very difficult or tricky uh, when trying to land a fish. So a slide diver can give you that advantage uh, that you can't get out of these. Well, you may say to yourself, well, why wouldn't I use the slide diver all the time then? You can. Um, uh, slide divers are a little more tricky on wire, which we will do a video on that at some point. And some people feel like they don't get the depth out of the slide diver that they do the deeper diver, even with the ultimate kit, which turns it into a magnum. So it's a personal preference thing. I have slide divers on, on my charter boat. Um, we use them for fishing up high in the water column. I have used them before on my mag braids, and I've caught lots of fish on them and won tournaments on them. They have their time and place where I feel like they are the um, way to go. Uh, and then I prefer the deeper divers um, primarily after that, but the dipsy diver is the tried and true. So it is a product that still works, and if you have some, uh, you can feel free to use it. I hope that helps give you a good understanding of the three brands and styles of the most popular trolling divers out on the Great Lakes today used for salmon and trout fishing. We'll probably take a little more in-depth look into some of this going forward. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Have a great day.